When testing a patient with AMD, are the usual suite of chart-based tests reflecting your patient's experience outside of the test room? This is the question that Beth Higgins wanted to explore. We wanted to have a look at if, um, if we could create some assessments or some novel tests that would look at these examples of everyday visual function because we feel that the nuances of these aren't really being assessed by your traditional chart-based tasks, so your, your visual acuity and contrast sensitivity. We also wanted to see if we could put them on a, a computer-based platform to hopefully allow um, home monitoring in the future. The tests involve a, a touch screen monitor, so you'll be sat in front of um, this big screen and we wanted to make it as um, as reflective of real life as possible. So that although a, a um, viewing distance was set, there's no chin rest no, involved. We just wanted people to sit comfortably opposite a screen, not to move forward or backwards and to, uh, to view, the, view the test on the screen. We've got three tests. The first test is called a visual search test. This involves an everyday object, say a hairbrush. A small picture would appear in the center of the screen. It would only appear for 0.5 seconds though, so you've got to look at it quickly. And then this would disappear and you were asked when ready to click the space bar and look for this image in an array of 49 other everyday images. Now the image could appear anywhere on the screen and as quickly and as accurately as you can, you need to look for it and click it. It's a touch screen, so you're able to actually click on the monitor where it is. So it's kind of like a puzzle, if you will, like a game. We wanted to make sure that the objects were brightly colored, so they had high levels of contrast and had lots of different layers to them, different patterns, just trying to emulate that you're not going to uh, be looking for a, a, you know, a black and white C on your shelf. You're going to be looking for a box of cereal that's got lots of words on it and colours and different shades. So again, just an effort to make it um, as reflective of real world visual experience as possible. Our second two tasks were quite similar. Um, they were road sign tasks. So we really wanted to look at um, visual identification here. Participants were sat opposite the same touchscreen monitor. A road sign would be approaching them as if they were driving along the road on, in a car. It could appear on either side and participants would need to identify what the road sign was and click the space bar as soon as they'd done so. These road signs were from the United Kingdom Highway Code, so in theory should be recognisable to all of us. Once they clicked the spacebar, they were shown a selection pane, the target image they'd just seen, and three distractor road signs. They would need, need then to correctly select the road sign they'd seen um, from this selection pane. And like before, there were um, practice trials, there were 12 practice trials and 40 test trials. The last task is very similar to, to, to the single road sign task. Let's call it the expert level uh, road sign task, because there were two road signs always on the same side of the road, but both would approach you and you would need to identify what both of them were, but only one would appear in the follow-up selection pane. So you would need to identify both road signs knowing only one of them is then going to appear in the selection of four. So it's actually quite difficult, but again, quite fun and a little bit harder than the single road sign task. The main feedback we got from our participants was how much like a game these tasks are. Well, our main outcome measures we wanted to look at were median response time and total correct responses. So what we mean is um, speed and accuracy. We found overall that people with AMD, particularly people with more severe AMD, were slower in their performance of these tasks compared to their visually healthy counterparts. But there was no significant difference in how accurate they were. So over, overall, that means, yes, people with AMD um, take longer to find that, that box of cereal on the shelf, but they will find it. They can still complete the task, just slower, which is actually quite a nice comforting finding from this study. One of the noteworthy findings out of this study is that we found a um, moderate association between response time and um, levels of visual acuity and contrast sensitivity for our participants. However, the, level, the association between response time and contrast sensitivity was slightly higher. Now, this is interesting because it's not contrast sensitivity isn't exclusively related to driving safety ratings. Now, this may be um, considered further in the future as something that the government want to look into.